Machines YouTube. Um, I'm Performance Reviews, and if you're not familiar with my channel, I'm a vacuum tech who gives you my point of view, not only on repairs, but this time a review of a product. Um, and the product is the Mila RX-1. Now, I know the RX-2 is out, but this is a long-term product review on the RX-1 and the RX-1 Red. They are pretty much the same machine. There's also an iSebo, if I'm saying that right, a uh, company out of Korea who actually made this formula. Um, and if you're not familiar with Mila, Mila is a premier German vacuum and appliance company. Now, they weren't sold on robotic vacuums, so what did they do back in 2014 when this was first out? Well, they found the best company in the business, bought up all their stock, and eventually ended up buying the company. So that's kind of interesting. Um, the Germans, I guess, did not have the robotics technology that the Koreans had, so they bought that. And when I say Koreans, I mean South Korea. Uh, so, like all the other Korean robotic vacuums, uh, there's no LiDAR, there's only a camera for navigation. And this doesn't seem like such a big deal today, but it really was big when this first came out. Um, this machine having this smart navigation. Not only did it not have a random algorithm, which is what Roomba, the robotic leader, used at the time, but it had a camera where it would go back and forth, kind of like you'd mow your lawn or like a person would actually vacuum their room. So with that being said, it was kind of industry-leading in terms of navigation. Now, in terms of actual vacuum performance, not so much. It was just mediocre, got the job done, and again, was slightly better than the Roomba, slightly quieter, and that was the goal. Um, and... Robotic vacuums, you know, to understand their navigation, I think you should take a look at the DARPA uh, rally, which was a government uh, rally that was put on for the government, basically for military reasons. And what they did was they drove autonomous vehicles across the desert for a long distance. Some of them used LiDAR, some of them uh, used this camera system, and this camera system was found to be far superior than the LiDAR at the time. Whether or not that's still true, hard to say. I'm not a robotics engineer, so I'm not going to go off too far in the deep end of that. But basically, using this camera, combined with a whole bunch of infrared sensors plus touch sensors, was really a big deal at the time. Um, so Mila came out with this, and they kind of flopped. Uh, we had these big dealer conferences, and they showed it off, and... Most Milo customers weren't really the people who would buy a robotic vacuum. The Milo customers tend to be a little bit more detail-oriented. So the way this was sold, and the way this and most robotic vacuums are intended to be used, is you set this on a timer, and it once a day goes out and cleans one level of your house. Uh, which, if you have a ranch house, is great. Um, and the point is, this is daily maintenance, you still need a vacuum once a week. And that's true with even 2020, the robotic vacuums. There's not a robotic vacuum that even touches even a lot of the cordless vacuums out there or any of the plug-in vacuums. So that's kind of where this stands. Now, interesting enough, right after this came out, we saw the uh, iRobot released a vacuum with a camera, I believe it was the 800 series. So that came out like two months later in retaliation for Christmas season. Uh, and then we later saw the Samsung hit the market right at about the same time that this did. Uh, maybe a little bit before on the Samsung. So that's kind of the history where this stands. The other thing is this was the first and one of the only robotic vacuums you can buy on the market today where you can walk into a brick and mortar store, get parts, service, and repair, and warranty work done. So that's important uh, because these things, they're not exactly... Uh, you know, heavy-duty appliances. They're a robot, and they're sensitive to a lot of things. Um, and I, I'll show you some footage of that. Uh, my personal experience with this robot has been mixed. So it came to me, so let this be said, when these things first launch, if they had any defects, the customer would be handed a new machine, and as a dealer, we were told to destroy the old machine and that was the policy. Again, the customer got a brand new machine, didn't have to wait for warranty. Excellent customer service on Mila's part. But what that meant is if the dealer did sell these, you ended up with a pile of them that were dead. I mean, you had a lot of these things that were dead. Um, so 
I remember we had seven or eight of these things the first six months uh, in the basement. So I did what any good person would do when they're at work and they're bored is like, well, what can we do to make money around here? What needs to be fixed? What can I do? And I was like, well, I have all these robots. We can sell them at a discount. Maybe I can make one or two of them. I was able to fix all but one of them in the pile. Um, so this was one of those machines, like I said, technically it doesn't exist. But that was a long time ago. That was maybe back in 2014, 2015. This was a long time ago. Now, you're going to be asking yourself, why is it red if it's that old? It was not originally red. I, through, again, some bad, uh, bad warranty parts numbers being sent to us, uh, we actually, I accidentally got sent this top years ago. So I thought, well, mine's scratched. I'll put a new top on it. And I waited to make this video to put this top on it. So this vi video is for the red and the original. And I'll hey, welcome to the in the shop portion of this review, where I'm going to talk about the guts of this Mila. And you know, you might be familiar with it looking like that, but I want to talk about what's under here because there's some interesting things. Uh, first and foremost, there is the vacuum fan. It is a very small impeller, like most of these things. It moves a minimal amount of air. It's just enough to suck through the very narrow channel here and suck up the debris from the brush roller. Those super heavy debris, it's not gonna suck up, it's gonna rely on the brush roller to lift. Um, we can see the camera that points up and around for navigation. We can also see the numerous touch sensors along with the IR sensors right here. And again, we can see there's IR sensors right there for drop off as well. So that's kind of cool. We have two different motors that power the side brushes and you can see the brush motor as well. You can also see there's a switch if you don't put the bin on that it knows. So that's kind of cool. Um, there's a couple other things I want to talk about in here why I have this apart. Let's go to the back side. So I think the most notable thing about this is it is pretty user serviceable in terms of what's in there. Now if I just open this up with Phillips screws, I can get to the battery. So it's got these four lithium ion cells, and these are very similar to the cells you see in Dyson, and I believe there's a model Tesla that uses the same cell. It's, it's fairly common. Uh, they're easy to get and replace if you had to make a battery pack. Of course, dealers are going to have a battery pack available. I'm just going to give it a nice tap and get the battery out of there. And I'm going to show you the cooler part. Now there are two USB ports under there. There are two different types, but there's two USB ports right here. Those were never used here in the US. Uh, my understanding is one of these the, is used to tag along a Wi-Fi um, switch. So the company who made this is out of Korea uh, called Icealbo. They don't really sell products here in the US. We got some nice foam here, of course, to pad things down. And again, these are Phillips screws to get to. They don't really sell the uh, products by their name in the US. You can't get them, but they're really hard to get. Uh, and they also developed, uh, helped develop the Xbox Connect uh, camera sighting system. So that's one thing they're, they're known for. So they actually sell a developer kit that is this without the pieces right here, where this area is blank, or at least they did, which is kind of interesting. So that's the inside, the guts of it. You can see the buttons and everything. The other thing to note is there's a PRAM battery, and if you're into computers, you know that this will eventually die and need to be changed and will cause major internal problems. So just be aware that there's a PRAM battery that will have to be replaced. Tail as the user sees it, and of course remove the bin. And the bin has some interesting features in it, and that it splits apart, and that the squeegee is user replaceable just rocks in like that. So that's kind of cool. Um, really useful to people. If I could say user replaceable. Really useful to most people to be able to do that. Uh, the machine comes with several, several filters like that. I vacuum my filter out on a regular basis, so they tend to last quite a few months. Um, pulling the brush roller off, there's just these clips and this cover. Brush roller pops right out. Now there is a sealed bearing block, which appears to be fairly high quality. But stuff can still get in here, hair can get in here, of course you can clean that out. But I have some, seen some users who neglect that. 
Um, the same on the end here is hair can get in there. You can see where there's a little bit of hair in mine. Um, and you know, you, you'll be able to get it out, but it's, again, you'll need to keep an eye on that and clean that. And then of course the brush roller um, can be, you can cut off and clean any hair. And you can see that the brush roller is in a chevron design, which I really, really like on this unit. Um, the, these side brushes are easy to change. Grab a screwdriver. Just pop right off. Like so, and under the side brushes, as you can see, a little bit of hair build up. You'll need to clean those off as well. Now you're supposed to replace these side brushes. I haven't felt a need to replace the side brushes on my unit uh, since I got it back in 2014. But some of these people will uh, insist you change these on a regular basis. So my guess is it just depends on the household. Interesting enough that there is no hair under that one. Um, there are, again clips you can adjust and remove your front wheel which you'll need to clean keep clean now this is a magnetic sensor it's not an optical sensor like the iRobot so it's going to be a lot more immune to dust and debris and stuff like that which I think is kind of cool as well so that's the speed sensor and you do want to keep your drop sensors right here here and here clean of dust if you can and I do have a maintenance video uh, where I go into all this stuff really in detail, and I'll link that here for you. But that's that's the bottom side. That's in the shop. We have two buttons on the top. Uh, we have the on button, a manual on and off button. There is a power port here, so you don't have to charge it with the base. I'm gonna let it do the power on self test, and then we have four different modes. So we have the regular mode, which is the strongest suction and the most thorough mode. The next mode we have is spot cleaning. This is actually a really cool feature. This I used mostly to demo in the store, but if you spill like breakfast cereal in a small part of your house or something, you could in theory tell it to do a five meter uh, uh, spot. So that's kind of cool. Um, that is edge cleaning. That changes the algorithm to follow the edges and then do its regular pattern. So it's interesting, it's got more than one algorithm built in. And then this is turbo mode, which is not more suction, but makes the machine move faster. Usually this machine double, double overlaps, uh, again, because it doesn't have a lot of power, but that turns the double overlapping off, so it's just making a single pass. That's what that does. So those are different modes. And then we have a play and a pause button here. And then we have a screen that will tell us our time the battery check indicator and you see if I pick this up if I put too much pressure on it it's going to give us an error code as well um, you have the power indicator it turns green yellow and red now the other thing that was cool about this at the time is this is a robot that was capable of doing a large area this unit can do about 1200 square feet which means I can do my kitchen my living room my dining room and some of the hallway if I have the doors closed which is really cool a lot of robots won't even do half that. So that's something when you're searching for a robotic vacuum, see how much square feet it does. Big thing. What's on here? We have an OK button, directional buttons, the return to base, and then we have the four modes that I cycled through manually right here. Um, those are all right here. You have a timer, so you can set the timer. Uh, And there you go, there's the timer. Uh, you have a power button. And that will also reset the error codes without hitting the manual switch, which is nice. Um, and then there's also like a manual control. So I can actually control. And when it goes forward, it will actually turn the vacuum motor and the side brushes on as well. So that's kind of a weird feature uh, that this machine has. Now I showed a little bit in the shop what the brush roller and all that looked like, but I want to talk about underneath the base of this, you have this comb. And what you can do with this machine is you can comb the brush roller off. You can also use this detailed brush to kind of clean in here and clean the sensors off. So that's kind of a nice little touch. Um, as 
far as the comb goes, it's not very useful. I don't use it. I use compressed air. And I like to go by with my regular vacuum and actually vacuum the filter and the, the, the stuff out of here. So this filter is about ready to be changed. Um, I have tried washing these filters. Really wouldn't recommend it. Like I said, I vacuum it out. Um, I have definitely gone through a few of these rubber strips as well. So keep that in mind that that will be a wear item about every year and a half, two years um, on here in terms of that. Now, the base also houses one other little Easter egg. Is I kind of like this, and it might seem like a mess of wires in here, but I assure you it's kind of practical. So you can extend the cord if need be, and there's a, like a laptop charger. So if the base breaks separately from the charger brick or vice versa, you could, in theory, replace just the one component. So that's kind of eco-friendly. We like that. Um, but you can also tidy up the cord by putting it in the base, and it can go out either side of the base, which I find really, really nice and useful. Um, see me putting all that, shoving all that cord back in there, and then the door just goes over there. So it goes all nice right there. So it's nice, compact. Now, it's 2020. Would I re recommend this after all my experience as a tech and as an end user, would I recommend you go out and buy this? That depends on the market as a whole. Um, I've seen this machine as low as $299. I think it is a great budget option in 2020. Now, if you want a premier machine with Wi-Fi and the app and all that sort of stuff, no. I would go take a look at the RX2, which has uh, also been heavily discounted. I would take a look at Neato. I think Neato is probably the industry leader in terms of robotic vacuums right now. I. Uh, kind of would err just going with iRobot because they still make a lot of the machines that this basically defeated and were superior. They do make some of their decent robots, but again, there's no financial reason really to buy an iRobot. They do make an iRobot that's self-emptying, but it has a smaller bin than, than this has. In fact, the iRobot that self-empties has about a half the size of it. So the bin's decent on this as well. Um, I only empty it like every other time it goes out, so I think that's good for my house considering the size that's being used its maximum square footage. Uh, when I had an apartment, I ran this, and I, shit, like every other week I was emptying this thing out, so like I said, big bin. Um, so yeah, at a discount, yeah, I would buy it, $299, $399, maybe, uh, $500, probably not. So. Uh, that's where we stand in 2020. Now, when this first came out, it was $899, then it went to $849, then we saw it go to $599, which at the time was a decent price for this, but I really think $599, uh, by the time they dropped that to the price, we had Neato come out with the D7 with the app, we had the iRobot with the app, and so this began to lack some of those features. But as a basic robotic vacuum, it's actually pretty good. You know, uh, the other thing with robotic vacuums, a lot of people don't talk about is setup. So the first couple times this runs, you probably want to be home or around it because it will get tangled or hit, you know, up on certain items. So you'll have to adjust a few things. Um, if you like to leave laptop cords on the floor, it will adjust those. Um, as you can see with the footage of the USB, uh, no, I, I, I couldn't get to adjust anything and stop on camera, but it does have a sensor. Uh, there's one other feature in this, is it has a high-low feature, which is kind of hard to show. Let's turn it on. Um, and the high-low the high feature on this unit, which I'm going to hold the base. There we are in low. There we are in high. This machine has the ability to climb over things. As I lift this up here, it'll actually do this and they go over deep thresholds, thick rugs. 
you'll even climb up certain pieces of furniture. So keep that in mind. Again, when you run it, you want to see how it runs in your house. I have a few spots where it can get stuck and wedged on certain uh, curved pieces of furniture. So keep that in mind as well when you're run running it. Now, the one drawback that the smart navigation technology has on this machine is if the camera gets covered when it's under something or the lights are off in the room or it's real dark out, what will happen is the machine just will rely on its algorithm and its touch sensor, meaning the, the camera will no longer be in use. Uh, so it, it acts drunk is the best way I can describe it. Um, so keep that in mind. You, you want to use this in the daytime while you're at work after you get it first set up. Or you're going to use this uh, while you're home. And it, it is quiet, I have to say. It's really quiet. You could use it when the TV is running. I have many times. And, you know, it's about, about as loud as some of my air purifiers. It's louder on the wood floor, and it will be louder on the floor beneath it. So when this machine is running, and I'm downstairs, it's really loud. But when I'm upstairs in the room, it's not so loud. So keep that in mind. That's kind of true with a lot of vacuum cleaners in general. But it's just something to note. If you had this upstairs and a baby downstairs trying to sleep or something like that. Um, in there. So that, that, that's pretty much my thoughts on the RX-1 is, yes, if you get a deal on it, go for it in 2020. Um, but there are better robots out now. So as always, thank you so much for subscribing. Uh, please definitely go check out our Patreon where we do giveaways, I give exclusive content, and all sorts of things, and that helps support our channel. If you're not wanting to do that but you still like our channel, definitely hit that subscribe, hit that thumbs up button. That means a lot more than notification, uh, a lot more than subscriptions these days, unfortunately. Uh, and have yourself a wonderful day.